This podcast is being brought to you by WXAV 88.3 FM and WXAV.com. WXAV, bringing the best podcasts to you. Hello, I am here with Jen from Women in Vinyl. How are you today? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thank you for being here. My first question for you is, what got you initially started in music? Because I did notice uh, on your website that you uh, play in a band. So um, I actually don't play music. I um, I got started in music. Just, I mean, from a young age, um, <clears throat> music was always part of my life. Um, I did play uh, like in band back in the day. Okay. But I um, really, it was through just being around uh, a musical family who enjoyed music, uh, listened to music, and always exposed us to it. And so really, you know, the exposure then sort of um, came to collecting music. And um, when I was growing up, you know, tapes and CDs were sort of the, the thing. And so, um, you know, recording your favorite song on the radio and creating mixtapes, things like that. So it just sort of was a natural uh, progression to kind of find my way into what I'm doing now. That's awesome. That's awesome. So what led you to wanting to start this company? Uh, well, I started working at a record manufacturer, so we make uh, vinyl records for bands, major labels, um, indie labels, uh, and what I noticed when I started was that the there wasn't a huge uh, female presence, mm -hmm. um, and there wasn't, I think that that's both in the workforce, but also in the sort of vinyl community, the collector area as well. And so I just wanted to start sort of shedding light on some of the women that run these companies or manage these teams and are working to really create the medium that we all enjoy so much. And, you know, it's it can feel sort of like a, a boys club in a way. Yeah, I agree. Um, <laughs> and uh, it shouldn't be. There's no reason why women don't collect things, too, or enjoy yeah. their music in this format. So, yeah. That's awesome. So what was the first record that you yourself had purchased or had come into your possession? So my parents had some records and I started sort of moving those, uh, you know, from the main space into my bedroom. And those were <laughs> things, you know, like at the time, I mean, it was like, you know, your Linda Rodstadt records and your Willie Nelson and stuff like that. And so um, I started moving those in. And then when I started working uh, in high school, we found this place that was selling records at the time. It was like this old school rundown place called Dragon Song. And uh, the first record I bought from them was uh, Led Zeppelin, uh, Houses of the Holy. Oh, that's a good one. That's a classic. Yeah, it's a great record. <laughs> Do you feel like there were certain like bands or music that kind of pushed you into doing this? Or like you heard one band and you're like, that's it. Like this is, I, you know, I want to be involved in the music industry in some way. Was there one band that you felt really or some one type of music in particular you know i'm all over the board when it comes to music but i think it's the love for the medium that kind of pushed me into the into the industry but band wise i mean you know i love hard rock you know bands like uh black sabbath is a big one of my favorites oh absolutely um, yeah so things like you know bands like that um i like a lot of what's considered like stoner rock um yeah so, yeah, I think, you know, getting to work with people on um, those kind of projects is really cool. You know, when you get to actually put out something that you also enjoy listening to, that's really fun. Oh, of course, that's that's very important. That's a that's a big part of the job, I'm sure. Yeah. So what were your biggest challenges that you felt in starting this and pushing for this? What do you think were the biggest challenges and how did you overcome those? Um, I think some of the biggest challenges were just making sure that it doesn't feel um, sort of like a sorority. I don't want it to feel like something that isn't inclusive to everybody because the whole point is that this should be inclusive. Mm -hmm. So even though I'm, you know, telling everybody about these awesome women and creating role models and showing what they're doing, it's not like a man bashing club. It's like <laughs> everybody, you know, like everybody needs to just, you know, be more inclusive of everyone, um, no matter, you know, what their background is. And, and I think that thankfully everybody for the most part has been pretty, um, supportive of that, but you do still get the people that are like, well, what about guys? You know, right. is there going to be a men in vinyl? And it's like, well, 
Come on. <laughs> that's like every other that's like every other company at this point. <laughs> right. <laughs> so do you feel that vinyl is listening to music on vinyl is different than listening to music in other forms? Definitely. I think a misconception is that the vinyl format is still um, created through like tape or, you know, some other way than digital audio. Mm -hmm. uh, realistically, people still submit digital audio to have their records made. Mm -hmm. But when you are pressing that music into a plastic, essentially, it is going to create a different sound. And when you are initially cutting that digital audio, you're cutting it into something that's called a lacquer. Okay. Which has like a almost nail polish like consistency to it. And then you're putting that in a electro plating bath, essentially, that is uh, creating a metal uh, plate that then goes into the machine to press your record. So all of these formats are kind of creating a warmth and depth to the digital audio files. Right. Um, and so like when you have a CD, um, that audio is more compressed or an MP3. Uh, mm. It's more wall to wall sound. Whereas when you are cutting a record, the the waveform and the audio sort of has to expand, which is why right. you can only fit so much music on a record as well. But um, I think that that sort of depth of sound is what creates that difference. Yeah, I was going to say, like, I personally, from my personal record listening experience, I've noticed that, you know, they just sound richer, thicker, fuller. The sound is just overall, yeah. you know, and it also obviously depends on what you're listening to it on and everything. And But uh, I noticed the sound is usually tends to be like a, a fuller, just kind of better sound, in my opinion. Yeah. The, the totally. little crackles are kind of the best. <laughs> yeah. Right? It's like it, it gives it just something extra. <laughs> yeah, it just gives it that, like, warmth and that, like, I don't know, something you can't get out of listening to anything on headphones, if that makes sense. Totally, yeah. So if there was another change you can make to the music industry, besides obviously, like, the boys club, what would that be? I think that as far as vinyl's concerned, the next sort of phase uh, that we need to start looking at is ways to be more environmentally friendly. I think mm -hmm. that's... Yeah, that's sort of the next step. I mean, right now we're in a place where, I mean, pressing pr plants are booked out. Everybody is just clamoring really? for records. Yeah, I mean, it's it's crazy. And I mean, at this point, it's almost becoming in a way like if you think about fast fashion, right? Like everybody mm -hmm. wants it cheap, fast and pretty. <laughs> and, yeah. and like, realistically, that's not how this format is created. It's an mm -hmm. old, slow process. And right. So I think, you know, with that impact, with getting everything out so fast and quick, we are, um, there's a lot of, you know, environmental issues with that too. And I think mm -hmm. that that's something that we need to start kind of focusing on as an industry to be more environmentally friendly. Yeah, that's, that's definitely, yeah, I'd have to agree with that. And especially if you think of like, if you think about it, you know, when you get, you know, a CD or you get a vinyl, it's covered in plastic and then you put like the plastic and then there's the paper covering and then. So there, there's a lot that goes into it, and I'm sure there's a lot that goes into it with, like, the where they're made and everything. Right. You know, so that definitely, yeah, I can totally see that. Do you think that um, that because of this, uh, if you could say, boom in the need for or want for vinyl, do you think that that has any effect on it? Or do you think that maybe in a couple of years that all of a sudden CDs will be big again and then that's where it'll be? Or do you think vinyl's coming back to stay? I think it's back to stay. I think people uh, who are getting into it now, you know, back in the 80s and 90s, when vinyl started to sort of be a lesser medium to a CD, mm. uh, I think that generation of people were sort of looking at this as new technology and new things to sort of grab onto. Mm. And I feel like the newer generations now were looking at things like, we want to slow back down because everything is fast paced, right? We're always on our phone. We're always getting quick information. So I think that we sort of enjoy that minute with our music to sort of sit and listen and, and enjoy it in that way. So I think it's here to stay and I think we're passing it on to future generations as well. I see a lot of friends with their kids, you know, sharing the record collection with them and that's awesome. And so I think, I don't think it's going anywhere. I think, you know, for now we're still on a, up, in an upward momentum i'd have to agree with that but i do think uh i think cassettes are out i think it's fair to say i, th yeah. uh, I think so too <laughs> i think it's fair to say the cassette tapes are out i haven't seen those in a car in 
quite some time. <laughs> yeah, they tried like the last year, maybe the year before, there was like a little bit where I was seeing some labels, try to put some tapes out. And I still every so often will see one here or there, but I don't think it's going to catch. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't know. If, I don't know if that one's going to pick up quite as much. Yeah. <laughs> So was so this company obviously like means a lot and I think it's really cool what you're doing with it and everything. Was there any like role do you have any role models in your life that you know told you like you can do this you should really do this that anybody in specific like push you to I mean my you know my family is um has always been extremely supportive of everything that I've wanted to do. I've always sort of done my own thing artistically and um, it wasn't, an, yeah, I was the first child and I think that they were sort of like, you want to go to art school? All right. You want to do this? Cool. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm always just sort of like surprising people with trying to do these things. And so having their support has always sort of made me feel very independent and in making these sort of decisions. And I think that they, you know, having that sort of relationship is really great for, they are in a way role models. Um, that's awesome. My, yeah. I mean, my mom's a very, um, strong person and I think that you know while there are a lot of people in the industry and a lot of the women that I profile that are definitely role models within what they're doing and mm -hmm. um, I'm wanting to create those role models for others in showcasing them mm -hmm. I think in my case it's yeah a little closer to home which is nice yeah that's really good it's always it's always good to have a good backing and support system when you're trying to to do something new and change things up because you're going to get criticism like you said earlier the you know, where's the men in vinyl and, <laughs> you know, whatever. And people are always going to have something to say. So I think it's always really good to have a good support system behind you just telling you, yep, you're doing this right. I think you're, you know, staying, sticking strong with it, which is really good. Yeah. Did you have any uh, radio experience? Did you ever, were you ever really into listening to the radio as well or? Oh, yeah. I mean, it, I was always listening to the radio growing up. I mean, we mm -hmm. would like get in the car, put on the radio station, um, you know, I used to like fall asleep to listening to the radio. So yeah, here in uh, Virginia where I am, uh, mm -hmm. DC 101 was a big radio station. And uh -huh. then um, 991 HFS, they used to have big HF festivals. Um, so yeah, it was, I was definitely into radio. And actually my cousin um, is in radio and she works at a radio station in Idaho. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, cause I was thinking, because I know we were talking earlier about, uh, vinyl and how it kind of went out for a little bit and then came back in do you think because as of right now you know with all of the different platforms like spotify and pandora and everything like that do you think eventually those will phase out kind of similarly to like cds and cassettes and then radio will come back in i think that there's a space for radio on them i think that would be really interesting um i think you know people are always going to want to be able to get their music when they want it just the way that the culture is now mm -hmm. Uh, but I think, you know, we should have radio, you know, that isn't that a great way to discover stuff in a way it's like a live radio or a live record store. Yeah. <laughs> you know? In a way, cause you get such a variety of different exposure to different artists, if you will. Yeah, exactly. And different people's tastes, you know? So I think that that's really interesting too, to like tune in to certain people that you have a similar taste and you know, you're going to discover music from them. I think that's a really cool thing. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And uh, what does college radio mean to you? You know, I wish that I had done something with college radio when I went to school. Mm -hmm. um, I think that these kind of platforms are so important because you're getting this exposure now. You know, you're not finding your way into something later. You're already sort of opening up to the experience of finding a career in something like this. Uh, so I think it's really important. And I think it sort of creates a community, too, um, at the school. So I think it's really great. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Yeah. And one last one last little question, just out of curiosity. What is your favorite part about the process of making a record? Yeah, so um, I love collaborating with the record label or the band to uh, like make their vision come to life. You know, they have an idea of what they want and working with them to say like, oh, this color would be cool or this packaging would be cool. Um, that's really fun and fulfilling and then you see it out there and you see it on Instagram and people are enjoying it and that's really exciting. That's got to be great to make a to just make somebody's kind of make somebody's art to come to life in a way. Exactly. I feel, I feel like the pack not just the the record itself but the packaging and the whole thing is kind of like a piece together and it all you know it all has to kind of coincide and I think 
seeing somebody's vision and kind of bringing it into a real life perspective in a way is kind of quite cool. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I would like to thank you absolutely so much for joining me today. And yeah, no problem. This was fun. Thank you very much for listening to this WXAV 88.3 FM podcast. Be sure to visit our website, wxav.com, for more information on your escape from Ordinary Radio.